Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Moons Media Moments, where today we will be talking about a movie that had been out for a while, but that I personally had not seen until recently. That movie being The Good Dinosaur. Now this movie is known for being bad, and I'm just gonna hop on that trend of criticizing it by sharing 5 things I disliked about this movie. As always, this is your spoiler warning, and well, without further ado, let's get into it. 1. Earning your family's love. Let's talk about the tower that is introduced in the start of the movie. Each of the dinos get to put their handprint on the tower once they've done something seen as worthy by the parents to do so. The parents have put their handprint on already as they were the ones who built up the farm. As the movie goes on, we watch as Arlo's brother and sister both put their handprint on while Arlo is denied time and time again. Arlo finds himself feeling he has failed his family and isn't truly a part of it as he's denied this one thing. Now, there are three main reasons why I think the system the parents set up is not just unfair, but also cruel. First, it isn't based on kindness, but on physical features. Arlo isn't strong enough to have his handprint on. It represented this idea that you had to do something bigger than yourself to be worth anything. And once again, it defined that something bigger to only be reflective in the physical world. Arlo can make his family laugh. He was a good supporter, both roles that are important, but also two roles that don't make much of a physical impact. The tower was physical, the footprints physical, and to be part of it you had to do something physical. What I found most interesting and disappointing was how the siblings both got to put their footprints on the tower despite not being good dinosaurs. They both tormented each other, found sneaky ways to get out of chores, and just other things that demonstrated flaw characters. Even the father was overly harsh and demanding, yet all of them had their footprints on because physically, they were strong. This is not a message I would want kids to latch onto because there are more important things than physical strength. Things such as kindness, love, respect, and loyalty. Things Arlo had tons of, and things that should have been more than enough to get his footprint on the tower. Second is how all-consuming putting your handprint on the tower became to the kids, and how much the parents encouraged them to be that way. Earn your family's love. That's all that matters. Being a contributing part of society is the most important thing. And yeah, that's important, but it isn't everything, especially when other people wrongly define what it is to be contributing to society. Arlo filled his family with love, taught his father to be gentle, and showed his siblings a type of strength completely new to them. These are all valuable things to society, but to this tower it meant nothing because this tower had a different definition, and that definition became the only focus of both parents and kids. And finally, the tower kept its importance at the end of the movie. I didn't think it was bad to have a tower representing all those things. In fact, it could even be good if those things were shown as being wrong, or at least as being flawed. But they weren't. Arlo came home and was deemed physically strong enough to be part of his family. He got his footprint on because he could survive in the wilderness, not because of his kindness or the love he had shown along the way. And that bugged me. I wanted that tower destroyed, or at least a speech at the end where Arlo shares that the tower didn't matter, he didn't need his handprint there. Or better yet, his mother coming in and saying you had always deserved to have your print there, or I love you no matter what. No, his mother says, you finally earned your place. Arlo went through hell, all because his family wouldn't accept him, and throughout all that physical pain came the even worse mental one that he wasn't enough for those who should love him unconditionally. The tower represents a very wrong and painful way for a family to function, and the fact Pixar encouraged this method as one that makes children stronger and better was disturbing to me, because it doesn't aid children, it scars them, too. The amount of suffering Arlo went through. This is more a critique on the audience the movie was going for. This is a family movie, meaning the movie should be suitable for all ages. So someone tell me why this was such a horror movie at times? Arlo is constantly bleeding, cut, scarred, knocked out, and worse. I swear he is invincible to the amount of craziness he survived, and that isn't something suitable for children to watch. A bit of it here and there is fine, but it was non-stop. My little brother would not be able to watch the movie because it would both scare him and depress him. I felt depressed in the end as I watched Arlo suffer unneedlessly. I didn't find myself entertained much because I was too distracted feeling sad. There was no jokes, no lightheartedness that normally comes from a Pixar movie. It was just darkness all the way throughout, and it made it unbearable to watch. 3. The Insulting of Culture Groups 
So let's see. There was the Native American who seemed to be on drugs, the Western T-Rexes who, at least the children, were not the smartest, and the New Age Paradactos that ate living things. Why? Why was this done? They fed into stereotypes of cultures that were harmful to those different people groups, and worse, I think it was supposed to be the one funny feature of the film. Well, it wasn't funny. It was offensive and highly inappropriate, and honestly, a shocking thing to see from Pixar, a company I'm used to being very respectful to other cultures. Thankfully, they seem to have cut off this trend as their newest movies have been very respectful, such as Soul being good towards the African American culture, Coco to the Spanish one, and even the new movie Luca was very positive towards the Italian culture. 4. That is not how evolution works. Now, I make it no secret on this channel that I'm a creationist, meaning I believe in the Bible as a history book that teaches about a young earth with no evolution in sight. I knew this movie was high on the evolution, but I wasn't going to hold that against it. This is what the majority of people believe in, and I've enjoyed movies and shows where that was a huge part of it. But for goodness sake, at least be accurate about it? The movie suggests that people evolved from dogs, which evolution does not believe. Evolution believes people evolved from apes, so why was Spot and the family he met dog-like? Also, why was the family crawling down to meet Spot when they clearly preferred to walk on two feet already? It was so off-putting and unnecessarily so. Also, the weird in-between creatures had no play in how evolution claims to work, and I just wish those working on this film would have done some basic research and at least tried to make it accurate. The idea behind the film is that the asteroid missed the Earth, not that evolution took a completely different track to get to the present day. 5. Arlo believes he murdered his father. Now this was my biggest complaint about the film. This was the most heartbreaking, unfair, wrong thing that I've ever seen from a Pixar movie, and that is that the movie blamed Arlo for his father's death when it clearly was not his fault. What happened was Arlo was unable to kill Spot and instead lets him go. When his father finds out, he forces Arlo to chase after Spot to murder him in the middle of a storm. Flash flood hits and his father is killed during it after saving Arlo. Arlo then goes after Spot to kill him as he blames Spot for his father's death, which is then the start of the crazy adventure that this film is based around. Throughout the film, Arlo learns not to blame Spot, but instead accepts the blame upon himself. He believes he wasn't strong enough to save his father, he wasn't good enough to be part of the family, and because of that, his father was killed. But going on this adventure, he becomes strong enough and redeems himself. But still, that blame is left on him and something he will have to live with for the rest of his life. Except, he shouldn't have. My least favorite part of the film was when Ghost Dad shows up. I was waiting for the, I'm wrong from him, or better yet, my death was my own fault. I should have never made you when your siblings are my love. But no, instead the father says, go save Spot. He literally sends Arlo out to earn his dad's love once again. Even beyond the grave, the father is forcing Arlo to prove he is physically strong enough to be a part of his family. This is so wrong. Arlo's own father blames Arlo for his death when it was the dad's own fault. It was the dad who was unfair towards Arlo, the dad who expected Arlo to do something against his nature, the dad who was stupid enough to take a child out in a storm. It was the dad, not Arlo. And the truth is, most kids will end the movie agreeing with Arlo that it was his fault, and then bring that into their own lives believing whenever something bad happens, it was their fault for not being strong enough. That is not a good message, and one that could have easily been avoided with a few lines by the father. So yeah, this movie wasn't great. But the thing is, I loved Arlo. He was one of my favorite Pixar characters. And maybe because that was because I pitied him so much, as he was blamed for things not his fault, forced into horrible situations, and expected to be something physically impossible for him to be. I'm pretty sure this movie's message was supposed to be about fear and overcoming it, but that message became very muddled with all the negative ideas and messages also being thrown out. Overall, it isn't a movie I would ever recommend watching, and one my little brother will be protected from. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know any other movies, books, TV shows, etc. that you would like me to do one of these on. Oh, and if you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, and even subscribing. I've got a lot of awesome content already on my channel, and even more on the way. But this is all the time I've got for today. I hope you have a beautiful and blessed day, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye! Oh